What's up, everybody? Let's talk Jets Radio. Hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, personally, I'm still trying to recover from Thursday night and that debacle. Um, we appreciate all the support, all the listens, all the comments and everything else. It's been absolutely overwhelming since uh, this football season has started. Um, and, and I guess I'll just start with a lot of the comments that, you know, I, I've seen directed either at myself or Tyson. This argument on Sam Darnold has been divided, I feel like, right down the middle with a lot of fans that, you know, still see the potential in Sam and that he can be great and others that are saying, you know what, the, the results are what they are in spite of who's coaching you, in spite of who's on the field. You're supposed to be a franchise quarterback. You're supposed to make the guys around you better. I understand both sides of the argument. I, I've seen a lot of the comments and I guess I'll acknowledge a couple things here and I'll start with, I guess, why I try so hard to defend him. And I feel like as a Jet fan, watching this team, you know, for 32 years of my life, um, you know, we've been waiting as a franchise for a franchise quarterback, you know, for 40 years now. Uh, it just seems silly to push a 23-year-old kid out the door. I, I understand the questions. I understand, you know, being a little bit skeptical, but I feel like as fans, we should be treating this kid a little bit better as far as trying to build up his confidence and actually give him a legitimate chance to succeed here. But I will acknowledge the other side of it that, you know, I, I'm seeing a lot now, which is that, you know what, for his career to really take off, it might have to be out of New York. He might be best suited playing somewhere else in an organization that can actually get it right. And, and I think the biggest thing that has, you know, led me to that belief is what we saw on Thursday night with Makai Becton and even, you know, with the way they handled his injury. Um, you know, Becton first, you know, the fact that he was even dressed when he wasn't capable of starting, th that tells you all you need to know. He's your first round pick, your, your prize possession, like we talked about in the post game after the show. If he wasn't capable of starting, why have him dress? Save the rookie from himself. Don't let him do more damage, you know, in, in a short week, especially. And so, of course, you know, Doga gets hurt. He goes out there for 17 plays, gets hurt worse. You see him on the sideline shaking his head. You know, what are we doing to this kid? And then even Sam, you know, he gets thrown on his shoulder, goes into the locker room, you know, his shoulders looks like it's, it's hanging off, gets shot up, comes back into the game. But of course, you don't even give him a, a fresh set of downs to go in on. You throw him in there on third and five, obvious pass rush situation, and, and he gets his ass beat. You know, so just doing these things, that's what's going to derail a quarterback. That's what's going to rattle his confidence. They don't do anything to, to build him up, to lift him up, whether it's from coaching, play calling, talent around him. None of that in this organization is built to help him. So from, from that standpoint, you know what, I think it's time that I do acknowledge the fact that, you know what, maybe he's better off somewhere else. Maybe his career will finally take off with, with the right coach in the right organization, with the right owner that's going to prioritize the quarterback and not do what we've done essentially to destroy him. So again, I feel like as fans, you know, we shouldn't be pushing for that. You know, uh, we should be, you know, trying to build this kid up. We should be trying to, um, you know, not point the blame at him every single chance, but just acknowledge what he's working with. Acknowledge the lack of separation by wide receivers. And again, Jordan Palmer was even talking about it um, right after the game uh, or on Friday morning um, on Colin Coward, where he said, you know what, th there were five or, or more uh, starting quarterbacks that sent him a text after the game uh, or during the game that people have no idea how good this kid is. And again, it's because he's a Jet because of the coaches that he's had, um, the, the playmakers that are around him. You, you took away his best playmaker in Robbie Anderson, uh, even the guys that you brought in this year who we all thought weren't going to be enough in, in Perriman and Mims, you know, some guys that we thought had some upside, but still not enough. Those guys are all hurt, Le'Veon Bell. So what chance has he truly had to showcase his talent with, with a clean pocket, with a system that gets guys open, that schemes guys open, makes for some easy throws, allows him to build up his confidence. And yet, you know, we're critiquing every throw in a game where he clearly was injured, comes back in, you know, shot up with painkillers and, you know, still doesn't throw an interception, still made some quality throws, still bought some extra time back in the pocket. And that was another thing that Jordan Palmer talked about where, you know, this was going to be the year that, um, you know, we'd look back on and say, you know what, um, this is where he truly grew as far as, you know, developing time and space in the pocket and things like that. Um, so again, I, I think it's not all lost here, but again, it, it's just, it's tough to watch. And I, I do truly understand the other side of the debate um, for those that want to critique his throws. I, I just think as fans, we need to look at things, you know, from a, a bigger picture with some perspective as far as why uh, he's being failed. So again, you know, uh, the other thing I'll also say, um, you know, that I guess I was kind of wrong about where, you know, just separating the fans and the media, you know what, the media, like I, I was hard on them for, you know, picking apart some of his throws, but you know what, that is their job. That, that is their job to, to call it the way they see it, you know, who's open, who's not open. We, we might be able to question as far as, you know, 
first read, second read, third read? Did he have time to go through the progressions? Was there a blitz in his face? All things like that. But you know what? It's their job to call it out. And it's our job as fans to say, no, this is where you might have been wrong. So is what it is. I, I, I hate having all these debates after, uh, after week four. And then, of course, here in the news, you know, uh, yesterday that Sam Darnold might miss more time now. Are we going to see Joe Flacco next week against the Cardinals? If we do, what are the expectations for the offense then? If they put up 20 plus points, is that an indictment on Sam Darnold now? Does he need some time off to, you know, get his head straight? Would that benefit him not being in the Adam Gase offense? I, I really do not know at this point. It's a complete crapshoot. And so I guess from that standpoint, not having an answer, maybe you do have to consider Trevor Lawrence. It would still bother the hell out of me if we're sitting there first overall and we just decide to bring in a new quarterback into the same storm or not give Sam Darnold a chance with a new coach and improved weapons. I think this kid has plenty of talent. I'm going to stick to that for the rest of the season until I see something that tells me otherwise. Again, we, we've seen the flashes of brilliance. We've seen the flashes where, you know, you, you shake your head and say, all right, third year quarterback, you can't do that. Yes, you want to see more consistency, but things need to be consistent around him, I think, for that to happen. So the, these next 12 games are going to be ridiculously interesting to watch just, you know, from a pure evaluation standpoint, um, you know, trying to separate the good and the bad and, you know, what he could actually do in a real offense. So uh, it, it's going to be interesting. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm probably rambling here. So talk to you guys later. Again, appreciate all the support and uh, we'll be back live, I think on uh, Tuesday night. So talk to you then.